all right guys welcome back to a presentation on nutrient cycle now this is where commonly in high schools we call this just carbon and nitrogen cycle so today's presentation is going to be a power packed one it's going to be loaded with information so i suggest you get your pens and your pencils out and let's hit the road running there's a lot of information i'm going to cover i'm going to do it in my usual 30 minutes or less presentation time all right so let's begin so first our objectives are to look at the carbon cycle understand what is meant by the greenhouse effect and global warming explain the importance of nitrogen and to plants and animals explain the nitrogen cycle describe the causes and effects of acid rain so see there's a lot of information right there so let's start off by looking at this big term up there, bio geochemical cycles. What that means, bio living, geo means earth, and chemicals, I don't know what that means already, right? And the cycle moving of all of those things. So, living organisms are made up of different kinds of atoms. So, we're bringing the living organism now all the way down to a tiny atom, right? Most common atoms, our most common ones are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, with nitrogen following close behind. So, these are the are compounds that we're going to be looking at now these atoms bond together to form large structures such as protein carbohydrates and lipids these are arranged in in particular ways to make up all the tissues needed to build a living organism so li living organism so we, if you see the cow right there break that cow all the way down it's going to come back right down to those tiny atoms that make them up that is important foundation for you to understand these carbon and nitrogen cycles now as the animal grows the growing tissues develop from the food they eat remember when we talk about food chains and webs and we talk about that biomass thing there in the ecological pyramids if you remember we say once the organism eat then they for the the materials become a part of their body same thing i'm saying right here so once the organisms eat and consume other plants and other animals then the materials will grow and add to their tissues so they expand so the animal stores the atoms as they grow on their bones and muscles in their bones and muscles and other tissues good now when the organism dies right the body is broken down and the atoms are released back into the environment now in red I have some group of organisms there I spoke about them in the food chain in the energy flow relationships before um, with food chains and webs good decomposers are organisms that specialize in breaking down dead bodies or waste matter good so these are special types of organisms and they are either fungi or bacteria so i hope you make note of that so decomposers are either fungi or bacteria and they actually specialize in breaking down dead bodies or waste materials now the atoms become a um, become a part of the soil as the bodies or as the organisms body is broken down and becomes mixed with the soil the atoms can then be taken up by plants right from the soil with water and build into the tissues of plants good these plants are then eaten by animals and thus becomes a part of the animal body once again so we see one cycle up right here so now first we say that the body make up of atoms usually carbon nitrogen and oxygen and we said these atoms now rearrange and rearrange to make carbohydrates proteins and these proteins form our muscles our bones and all the other tissues and we say once we continue to eat and eat then these muscles and bones and tissues continue to grow and expand but unfortunately when we die now these decomposers now will break down the tissues and the bones and the muscles and all of these things mixing with the soil and all of those materials now can be absorbed by the soil become absorbed by the plant from the soil and become a part of the plant's body and when it's, it's, it is a part of the plant's body now when one animal like a goat or a cow comes and eat that plant then the material move back from the plant into the animal again and so it goes 
cycling Good. so the cycling process by which these atoms are released and reused in nature is called the bio living organisms geo meaning the earth soil and the chemicals which we're talking about the carbohydrates the carbon the proteins right cycling examples include now the carbon and nitrogen cycle so this is how the carbon and nitrogen cycle comes into play so we're going to look at them individually first one up is the carbon cycle now the atmosphere contains about 0.03 percent of carbon dioxide right so during photosynthesis now everybody remember photosynthesis if you look on the diagram over here you see that during photosynthesis good let me bring up my highlighter right here you can see carbon in the air so during photosynthesis is the only process that takes carbon from the air so it is taken here by these plants um, on land and it's also taken here by these plants in the water so carbon is taken from the atmosphere and the plants use the sunlight and make carbohydrates good class now what happens next is that animals feed on the plants and they will in turn obtain the carbon from the plant even though the carbon in a form of carbohydrate is still carbon good so they now will absorb that carbon into their bodies and then they get fat and get big but when they respire which is the process by releasing the energy from the food that they eat when they respire they will also release some carbon dioxide because respiration means you produce carbon dioxide and they will release some carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere the same thing occurs in the water the same thing occurs on land now waste materials from living organisms and their dead bodies are used as food source for that special group of organisms the fungi and bacteria then we call it decomposers now when they eat that they are going to respire and they are going to release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere good additionally now i'm going to show you some new things so once you get those now i'm going to add some things to it just like how you have um the dead bodies and the waste materials that are piling up in the soil and in the earth they actually go down and form what we call fossil fuels you now that fossil fuel include coal and oil right and natural gas you now these fossil fuel are carbon based material is like it build up over years upon years upon years right and it forms that that, that base we call them oil reserve we call them um, coal mines right out and natural gas areas that we can get these fuels from the earth this is because of the, the, the years upon years and decades and centuries upon centuries of dead plants and animals bodies being actually petrified in the earth right and from the sea they call it sediments forming and all of that flow to form natural gas crude oil right and coal now when we extract those from the earth and burn them we burn them and i want you to write down this term called composition or combustion sorry not composition my apologies combustion when we burn these fuels we release the carbon back into the atmosphere so if you get out dry sticks and, and twigs and wooden logs from the from the forest and burn them the smoke you see coming off is carbon we're releasing back to the atmosphere if they extract crude oil and make gasoline put it in engines or in factories and in ships and in planes and buses and cars and bikes once it burns and gives off an emission it's carbon that is going back to the atmosphere right so i want you to understand that man's if mankind effect side on the carbon cycle we're going to look at it deeper next but i wanted to point wanted to point that out from the, the cycle here that when humans extract fuels and burn them via combustion they release carbon back to the atmosphere when the organisms that feed on other other organisms whether decomposes our plants and animals respire they release carbon back to the atmosphere diffusion in or out of the air over this side you can see it here so it's releasing carbon back to the atmosphere 
there's only one process here that is taking carbon out of the atmosphere and that is photosynthesis so basically that is what the carbon cycle is in a nutshell if you use a textbook and watch this video and put it together you see that the carbon cycle is very easy right so their main processes are photosynthesis which takes carbon from the air then you have respiration which adds carbon back to the air then you have combustion which adds carbon back to the air that's all the carbon cycle is mainly about now the human impact on the carbon cycle is ginormous so since the industrial revolution humans have been burning fossil fuels to release energy for machines this adds carbon dioxide to the atmosphere at an alarming rate alarming means almost scary rate right resulting in an increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now that's gonna have a problem that's gonna create a problem for us so if you look on the images there you can see all of the areas that carbon is being added back to the atmosphere through airplanes through factories and you can see the ton load of smoke coming out here carbon is in that to wharves and so forth we have ships and different container machines that operate them and look at this traffic line probably people from Jamaica might not see it so much like this except you know you're traveling on the causeway or something like that good but all of these vehicles are adding carbon carbon to the atmosphere so what does that mean if you look at this graph it's actually showing you how fuel fossil fuel emissions are increasing over time and this time it's also showing you um, the atmospheric carbon concentration so we kind of we're not kind of we are linking the fossil fuel emissions right that that occur over the 1800s all the way up to 2000 and to the 2000 and the prediction going forward to 2100 what you will see is that early 1800s the emissions are the emissions here are going to be tied to the amount of factories and vehicles and so forth so back in our early 1800s they never have one ton load of factory around the world they never have one whole heap of bus cars planes ships trucks all sorts of something they never have one whole heap of engines but as and as a result of that the percentage are the parts per million concentration of carbon dioxide was way below 300 not way below but below 300 now as the emissions there was low and continued to increase when it hit 1900 now more cars more bus more truck more ship more plane more factories as a result of that you can see the carbon concentration in the air now start to increase when you reach 1950 you see it start to go up look at emissions start to shut up now in the 2000 start to go up look at carbon dioxide in the atmosphere start to go up when your prediction now going forward to 2050 is that it will continue to rise 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 right so what does this mean for us when we have this massive jump in the amount of carbon dioxide within the air this other means some serious way carbon dioxide concentration are in the earth's atmosphere has increased by 20 percent over the last 100 years and based on the graph we can see that it just starts shut up because we start making more bus more plane more truck more car more ships more engines right now the effect has been worsened by deforestation what we mean by that now people start chop down tree if you make board board if you make buildings board if you make furniture if we do all sorts of stuff right now remember from the carbon cycle i told you that photosynthesis is the only process that takes carbon from the atmosphere so if you start cut down the trees like cut down our whole forest now then you reduce the amount of carbon where we actually take out of the atmosphere because you're reducing the amount of trees right so the pro so that's why the carbon concentration of the air start increasing the atmosphere start to increase more because you are adding and adding and adding with more and more engines and then the only thing that is taking carbon dioxide from the air you stop it you're reducing the effect because you're cutting down the forest now what all of that carbon doing cause see it here now greenhouse effect the greenhouse effect is basically when heat from the sun reaches the earth um, a lot of it is it 
bounces back into space so it's like you reflect so when the, the, the heat from the atmosphere from the space from the sun reaches the earth a lot of that heat is reflected however within the earth's atmosphere a lot of gases like carbon dioxide and methane they what they do right they, they absorb some of the heat from ex escaping back into the earth's surface good keeping it trapped in the earth and these gases are called greenhouse gases watch me now so these gases what they do is that they absorb some of the heat from escaping so in the beginning let me tell you that all of the sunlight most of it come and is reflected back into space but these gases now absorb some of the heat right so that all of it now reflect back into space now what that does is a good thing and it's a natural process because it keeps the earth warm right because if all of the heat did reflect back into space we wouldn't freeze off on the earth the earth would have been one high box but because of these gases that keep absorbing some of the heat they keep it warm so that all of us can you know walk and out and about and feel nice warm temperatures good so the greenhouse effect is a natural process guys it is important to keep the earth warm so that organisms can survive on it now what happens right is that the temperature of the earth if we continue to increase the amount of greenhouse gases so remember that their process is to absorb some of the heat and keep it here so that the earth is warm enough for us to survive now if we continue to increase the amount of greenhouse gases in the earth's atmosphere what do you think are going to happen we're going to absorb more and more and more and more and more heat therefore the temperature of the earth is going to continue to rise higher and higher and higher and higher good that's how we end up getting the global warming effect because the globe as in the whole world is becoming warmer and warmer and warmer because we're adding more and more greenhouse gas good now what are some of the effects of global warming we can have possible effects include polar caps uh, may melt and cause sea levels to rise that's one of the most obvious one because of the polar so we have a whole heap of ice what it means that they can have a longer period of what we could call now not really summer but it's kind of summer in a sense but they will have longer periods of um of of, of higher temperatures then so therefore you have greater melting occur and they say that that melting can lead may lead to sea levels rising it's a possible effect possible this could may this could lead to many people losing their homes loss of crop crop producing land and also displacement of animals for us as biologists the most important aspect to look on here is the loss of habitat so if organisms like this polar bear here used to have a lot of ice to walk around on and to go fishing and so forth if this polar bear realize that well uh, the um the place now freeze up long enough like first time but you look the things them just are melt and have less and less ice to work with so it's losing habitat if we have flooding and um, loss of land arable lands for farming we lose food because crop production gone down and the animals that live on that spot of land going lose their homes as well good so changes in the amount of land and sea could lead to changes in weather patterns now this is one of the most important thing we can tie into the whole um, global warming and uh, greenhouse effect it's called climate change and it is a term that is being thrown around now uh, everywhere you go you hear about climate change so one of the biggest thing that causes climate change is this whole global warming effect right our possible global warming effect this could cause increased rainfall in some places increased drought in other places increased frequency and severity of hurricanes we in the caribbean know about that every year um in other places you hear about tornadoes so those things now start to become more frequent and then start get stronger and stronger so you start about category four five we don't know if they reach six yet 
right but that's what we mean so all of these things occur wildfires occur also in the united states and other places around the world those are all natural disasters natural disasters that become berserk they go crazy when you about climate change these are things that are spin off they say from global warming and um, the greenhouse effect that leads to global warming all right so let's move on now to the nitrogen cycle now the nitrogen cycle basically is very 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 important just like our carbon cycle is very important but about 79 percent of the air around us contains there's is made up of nit um, nitrogen gas so the air around us 75 percent the air that you breathe in and out every day contains 79 that's almost 80 percent nitrogen gas now nitrogen gas is very very unreactive so as a result of that we know and breathe out your night um the you inhale and exhale that nitrogen gas goes in and come back out just the way it went in it is unreactive so you breathe in 80 79 percent you breathe out but the same 79 percent it doesn't interact with us like that all right but now this nitrogen is very 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 important because it is an essential component of molecules like proteins which builds the muscles the tissues the skin ear another important part you build up your dna your dna is like your blueprint the code that put you all together now this nitrogen is very important to be a part of that molecule now how this nitrogen move in the world now plants manufacture protein by absorbing nitrogen from the soil mostly as nitrates remember i said before when we look um we did a presentation on uh and special relationships and we say uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria i hope you remember that one make sure you check out that video right so these nit so what these do is combine these plants combine with combine carbon hydrogen and oxygen to make building blocks for proteins right and the dna for plants so that's what the plants they do they take the nitrogen from the nitrates combine it with the carbohydrates and proteins and combine with carbon hydrogen and oxygen to make proteins and dna animals obtain their nitrogen from protein they eat right right so they, they may eat plant and they may eat, may eat animals or they may eat both plants and animals in their diet so the protein they eat is then digested and nitrogen is released from it and used to make muscle dna enzymes hormones whole heap of things they use to make both for nitrogens to make right now the nitrogen cycle is a little teeny bit more complex than the carbon cycle but we have to break it down in about four little steps and you take them piece by piece and you put the whole thing together don't look on the carb nitrogen cycle like when you see that big diagram there and just try and try understand it like that understand it by understanding the processes that occur in it so in the nitrogen cycle it consists of four main processes nitrogen fixation decomposition nitrification denitrification so let's look at four of them so nitrogen fixation is converting nitrogen gas into nitrate now that is going to be done by nitrogen fixing bacteria right so 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 understand that so nitrogen fixation is converting that nitrogen gas what we say very unreactive right and make it into a form called nitrate boom decomposition now is when plants and animals die plus their waste like feces and urine their bodies are broken down to make ammonium compounds let me say then though their bodies are broken down to make ammonium compounds so when you see the chicken coop and you see the fall the chicken feces and so forth they call it fall manure that's going to be used to make you can call that ammonium compounds it's going to be used to make ammonium compounds so anyways the feces and all them something they used to make ammonium compounds we know the most the grandmother use the feces as fertilizer all right rest that so remember now decomposition is carried out by a special group of organisms who call them decomposers now the next part is nitrification now nitrification 
is where the ammonium compounds we just talked about um, formed by decomposition where we just talked about are converted to nitrates nitrites sorry 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 converted to nitrites by a group of bacteria and a second group of bacteria will also convert the nitrites into nitrates let me go that over again so we say that nitrification now is when the ammonium compounds is acted upon by two groups of bacteria the first group convert the ammonium compound to nitrites and then the second group of bacteria convert the nitrites to nitrates rest that right there last process is denitrification and i don't think i spelled denitrification right there i don't think i know it's not spelled correctly it's spelled correctly up here but denitrification right this is a process where bacteria converts nitrates into nitrogen gas we're done with the nitrogen cycling that is it so those four processes move nitrogen from in the air into the soil into so that plants can absorb it then finally go in a plant and animals when them they, they go back in the soil and then you have other bacteria in the soil will take it back from the soil and release it back into the air it finish so if you look on the diagram now where we see denitrifying bacteria that convert nitrogen nitrates back into nitrogen gas but if you look over this side, you see nitrogen fixing, nitrogen fixing bacteria that convert nitrogen gas into nitrates, right? And then you have another set of bacteria that work alongside the decomposers. They are called nitrifying bacteria. And what nitrifying bacteria do is just do the process of nitrification. Convert the, nitri the ammonium components into nitrites and then from nitrites into nitrates. Once you reach a nitrate, plants can absorb it. Once it's absorbed by plants, animals eat the plants and animals get it. When animals and plants die, their body or their waste is broken down to ammonium compounds. And then ammonium compounds is going to be worked on by nitrifying bacteria, converting it first to nitrites, then back to nitrates, and then the plants can absorb it again. If plants can absorb it, you have one special group of bacteria again, then call them the denitrifying bacteria. What they will do is to break down the nitrates back into nitrogen gas and release it back into the atmosphere and the cycle keeps going now in nature a little nitrogen fixing occurs during thunderstorms where lightning provides energy to convert nitrogen to nitrous nitrogen oxides where it dissolves in the rainwater and form nitrates right so a little bit of nitrogen fixation occurs through lightning where the lightning provide the energy for converting nitrogen gas into nitrous nitrogen oxide and the nitrogen oxide is dissolving in rainwater when I soil once it dissolves in rainwater it forms nitrates when I soil, soil plants absorb that nitrate so, well. so we understand nitrogen cycle let's look at acid rain now acid rain is something that really occurs in most first world countries um, this is so you remember from carbon cycle we talk about the combustion of fossil fuels so if a vehicle them and truck and bus and plane and ship and factories they produces they produce gases such as sulfur dioxide see me write it here so sulfur dioxide this is a formula for sulfur dioxide and they produce nitrogen dioxide this is nitrogen dioxide right here these gases dissolve in atmospheric water in the clouds and later fall as acid rain right so the the sulfur dioxide right dissolve in the atmospheric water to form sulfuric acid while the nitrogen dioxide dissolve in the the atmospheric water form to form nitric or nitric acid see that's all so you know acid rain form form the sulfur dioxide and the nitrogen dioxide will come from the, the, the fuel emissions go into the clouds dissolving in moisture in the cloud and then now form sulfuric acid and nitric acid now when that falls it have serious effects right one it may kill plants and animals and trees it may kill plants and trees acid rain may dissolve some compounds um, of poisonous metals 
thus introducing them into lakes and rivers this poisons organisms that live in the water and these things are minute but over time they get big have massive effects so in cities stone statues and carvings and metal structures have been damaged because of erosion due to acid rain so let's summarize everything now so we said that living organisms are built up from atoms mostly carbon nitrogen and oxygen and the nitrogen right then we said that the biochemical cycle show how materials are reused in nature right the carbon cycle shows how carbon passes from the air soil plants animals and back to the air again we look at the greenhouse effect and it's important <clears throat> and first we mentioned that it is an important natural process caused by greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that absorb um, that absorb uh, heat energy that should be from the Sun and keep the Earth's surface warm enough for life as we know it but we know that increasing levels of carbon dioxide in the air lead to global warming and sea levels may rise and weather conditions may change and that's what we call it climate change effect we looked at the nitrogen cycle and we look at how nitrogen is passed from the air the soil the plants and back to animals again and, and to animals and back into the air again we know that <coughs> bacteria are very very important in the nitrogen cycle because basically it's a bacteria that keeps the nitrogen moving and then finally we just close off and look at the acid rain that forms how it is formed and the effects it has. We look at the sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide how they form sulfic acid and nitric acid and the effects that they have on the on the um, the whole environment. Alright guys so that's it. I really do hope that you have learned something. I know that it has been a lot of information. Please just rewatch the video, have a textbook on the side and you know processes are very simple you just need to understand them and then refresh your memory so that's it guys have a wonderful day